You can see all links and common questions associated with this video by going to the right and clicking more info. You can help support this channel by rating and commenting on the video. Hey guys, in this video I'll be showing you how to make your own website from scratch using only a text editor. I'll be showing you the basic HTMLs and CSS tags that make up all websites. Okay, the first thing we're going to want to do is open Notepad or whatever text editor you have. I'm just going to go to Start Run. I'm going to type Notepad, click OK, and here we have a Notepad. Now let's make an HTML file. Let's say foo. Just type anything inside. I'm going to go to File, Save As, and I don't want to save it as a text document. I'm going to go right here under Save As Type and select All Files, and I'm going to type uh, foo.html, and I'm going to save it to my desktop. Now I should have a file called foo.html on my desktop. I'm just going to drag it and drop it into Firefox or any internet browser. You can put it in Internet Explorer or Opera. And as you can see, it says foo. Now I can start making changes to the page just by editing the text. I'm just going to edit it. And I go to File Save or Control S. And then I go to my browser and click F5 to refresh. And as you can see, the changes I made here, after I save and refresh, appear on the page. So let's get started with the basic tags. Before I start talking about the page structure, let's talk about how tags work. I'll be using this super old bold tag that's not really in use anymore, but it makes text bold. So let's say foo. I'm going to save it, and it displays foo. But how do I end the tag? Um, let's say not bold. How do I make whoops? How do I make this text not bold? I have to end this bold tag. How do I end it? This is basically how you end any tag in HTML. You type the tag again, and you add a slash, a forward slash, to the beginning of it, and that's it. Save, refresh, foo, and this is not bold. So you can put this end tag wherever. Foo not and then the tag was ended and then bold. Okay, so now you know how HTML tags work. You know how to start them and you know how to end them. So let's set up the basic structure for almost all HTML pages. First we set up HTML and then we end HTML and everything else will be in between obviously. Uh, first we have a head tag here and then we end the head tag the head part of the HTML will have the JavaScript, the CSS. It'll have the title, the meta tags with the description, with the icon, with all that stuff will be in the head. The body is the one that will actually contain all the content of the page. Everything that's pretty much visible. So that's the basic structure. Uh, let's set up a title. If I save this and I refresh here, it's not going to show anything. It's just the structure. So let's set up a title in the head. Let's see what it does. Title. Uh, this page is foo. Very descriptive, right? Slash title. I'm going to save this and I'm going to refresh here. And the title says this page is foo. There's, it has nothing to do with the content, it just displays the title. So let's add some content to the page. I'll just say, hello world, save it, refresh, and this is our first basic HTML page. However, it's pretty boring, isn't it? It's just plain. It doesn't have any pictures, it doesn't have any colors, it just has text, and the text is aligned at the beginning. So that's kind of ugly, isn't it? Let's mess around with some other tags here. Let me talk about a very simple tag for example purposes. It's the HR tag. I'm going to save it, refresh. What does it do? It makes a very ugly horizontal line across the page. So how would I end a tag like this? Let's say I put text in the middle and let's say slash HR. Would, I, would it make any difference whatsoever if I end this tag? Let's refresh and the answer is no. Some tags don't need to be ended. And to display that they don't need to be ended, people add this forward slash to the very end of the HR code. So if I refresh, it's just this. What if I only wanted this horizontal line to be 50 pixels or 20 pixels? 
What if I wanted it to be a different color? Certain HTML tags have what are called attributes. So let's make it uh, width. And I'll say the width is equal to uh, 30 pixels, 30px. And the color, I'm going to say it's green, just to make an obvious difference. I'll save it. Now I refresh. And now I have a green horizontal line that's 30 pixels wide. You can also add quotation marks around them. It's kind of optional. doesn't matter. So let's make something actually useful. Let's attach an image to the page. Uh, in the same directory that I have the foo.html in, in my desktop, I have an image called jimmyr.png. I'm going to attach it to my HTML page, and here's how you do it. We're going to use the image tag, and it has an attribute called src, image source. And I'm just going to say jimmyr.png. You can put it in quotes if you feel happier. And that's it. The image thing doesn't need a slash image or something like that, so we just add the slash to the end and save. Let's see how it looks. And there it is. I added the image to the page. Next, I'm going to create a hyperlink. I'm going to link Hello World to my site. And here's how I do it. I'm going to use the A, the anchor tag. And it has the attribute called href, or href, or hypertext reference, or something. And it's going to point to whatever website you want to point that text to. I'll say jimmyr.com. And the A tag actually needs an ending. I'm going to end it by saying slash A, wherever the hello world ends. And that'll say stop linking the text at this point. I'm going to save it. I'm going to refresh in Firefox. And here it is, hello world. If I click it, it goes to my website. Main tags in HTML that are used to position almost all websites are the div tag. It's used to divide the chunks of code. Uh, basically, let's say you want your links on the right side of the page. You're going to put all of those links, you're going to put them in a div tag, and then you're going to position them. I'll tell you how to do that later. The next is the paragraph tag, uh, which is going to hold most of your big chunks of text. The next is the span tag. Any HTML element that has text, like the paragraph tag, you can put spans in it, the span tags in it, to make them bold, to make them metallic, to make certain parts of the code any particular style, to make the font bigger, the text green, whatever. The next is the line break. Oh my god, that's the most useful thing ever. If you want to position the items, you're going to have to use line breaks. You can't just type enter and have it make a new line. Now I know there's tons more HTML tags out there, but I want you to concentrate on these because these will really be the ones that let you structure the page and really feel a sense of progress to it. But these alone will actually not structure the page. You need something called CSS. And CSS is actually very simple, so don't get overwhelmed just because you've heard it before and it looked ugly. Let's get started with CSS. Next, I'll be showing you how to add CSS within your HTML. I know that might sound scary, but CSS is actually just a way to style your page a way to position the elements on your page and make it look nice. So it's pretty much essential. Um, it's not very hard to learn. Let's make a new div. I'm going to make a div and I'm going to end a div. That in itself didn't change anything. The div is just an HTML tag. But let's add the CSS. I'm going to add the style attribute which allows me to directly add um, CSS to my HTML element. So that's all I have to add, just space style, and then I can add different stuff inside the style. For example, let's say I want my background to be green. I'm going to save it, and I'm going to refresh, and look, it's a green background. But look, it went all across the page. What if I want to change it so that it's only 500 pixels, or 20 pixels, or 30 pixels? So what I'm going to do, every time I end a tag, 
I just add a semicolon. I said background is green, that's one command. I'm starting another. That's all semicolon says. So I'm going to start another command. I'm going to say the width is 50 pixels. I'm going to save it and I'm going to refresh. Oops. I'm going to refresh. And now that element is 50 pixels. And that's it. This is CSS. This is very simple. I'm going to add another thing. I'm going to add a semicolon to say that ended the last command. And I'm going to say the height is uh, 100 pixels. I'm going to save it. And I'm going to refresh. And now the height is 100 pixels. Now the question is, how are you supposed to know what tags you can use? How are you supposed to know what properties you can put for them. Well, just search Google for W3School CSS. They have super good CSS tutorials. How to change the background, the text, the font, the border, the outline, the margin, the padding. They have all kinds of stuff you can use and then you can add it to your HTML pages. The main thing I want to concentrate on is changing the position of the elements on the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the style I'm going to change all this code to say position. Position. And it's either relative or absolute. It doesn't really matter right now, so I'm just going to type absolute. Again, the semicolon ends uh, that command. And then I'm going to say top and left. Instead of y and x or x and y, CSS has top and left. And this is how it works it says from the top of the page, I want to move the element down 100 pixels. And I'm going to save and I'm going to refresh and it moved down 100 pixels. If I say 50 pixels, it's going to be around right here. Oops. Right there, see? So I can change the position from the top in however many pixels I want to move it. Now, for uh, the x coordinate, we're going to use left. <laughs> Don't ask me why, but it's left. And all it says is from the left, move uh, 100 pixels or something. So I save it, and as you can see, it moved from the left 100 pixels. So it basically moved right 100 pixels. Okay, I've made my notepad a little wider, so you can see it a little bit better. But this is basically what I did. The div element has the attribute style, which lets me add CSS code. And this is the only CSS code I used. It says position absolute. So relative to the page, I moved from the top 10 pixels down. And I moved from the left 100 pixels across. That's all I put, and that's all you need to move an HTML element. Let's set up a fake layout. Um, I'm just going to copy and paste what's inside this div right now. Let me just copy and paste once and see what it does. I'll save and I'll refresh here. And as you can see, I have hello world, hello world. To add a line break, I'm just going to put a BR between these two elements and save it. I'm going to refresh. And as you can see, I, it has hello world and hello world. I put the line break right here and it simulates as if I clicked enter or something. That's all the line break does. Let's copy and paste this a few more times. And let's make a fake layout. I'm going to save it, refresh. And as you can see, I have my links. Let's put the links on the, on the right side of the page. So I'm going to push it more left. I'm going to set it to 450 or something. Now I save it. I click refresh. And as you can see, the links are now on the right side of my page. I want to put my content on this area, right on the left side of the page. So let's make a new div that has the content. So I create a div and I say, let's make a header tag. This is what's called a header tag. It makes a big headline. This is foo. All right, I'll save it, refresh, and look at that. I have it on the left right now. I didn't have to change the style or position it because by default the elements are already going to be on the left side. And I can add some text. I can add a paragraph. Oops. 
This is a paragraph of text. Yo. Yop. Okay, save it. And there it is. So, this is my first fake layout. That's all you need to do. If I wanted to, I can position it so the content is over here and the and the links are over here. Or I can add three elements. Um, let's position it so the content's a little bit more to the right. I'm just going to copy and paste. There's no use uh, typing it all over again. I'm just going to copy the style tag of the previous div. Uh, of the div right here that has the links. And I'm going to paste it on this new div I made. And I'm just going to position it a little bit more to the left. Let's say 250. I'll save it. I'll refresh. And as you can see, I move this element to the, um, to the right. <laughs> from the left, from the left. I keep saying left. I'm sorry if I do. And now I can just copy and paste woohoo and I can put another element that's a clone of this one and I can say it starts at 10 pixels to the, uh, to the right <laughs> so as you can see I can stack different HTML elements and put them where, wherever I want and I can actually even stack them on top of each other if I put it 200 pixels to the right whoa the elements will actually overlap. It looks ugly, doesn't it? Okay, so it got a bit messy, and this is a bit of HTML now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete everything except one of the divs. In this case, I'm leaving the one that says, uh, this is foo and this is a paragraph of text. I can even delete the style because I don't really care about the positioning anymore. I'm going to save, refresh, and it says this is foo. I'm going to talk more about borders and spacing. So let's add a border real quick. I'm going to say border is one pixel and it's going to be a solid line. It's not going to be dotted or dashed or anything like that. And I'm going to make it orange because that's the worst possible selection. And now I refresh and it has an orange border over the div. Now as you can see that kind of looks ugly because the text is right next to the border. So how do, I, how do we add a little bit of spacing between it? Well, I'm going to end the border tag with a semicolon, and I'm going to say the padding to 15 pixels. And I save the page, I refresh, and as you can see, it added some padding. It added some space between the border and the text. I can also add something called the margin. I'm going to set it to 20 pixels. I'm going to save and uh, refresh. And as you can see, the spacing between the outside of the element and the border increased by 20 pixels uh, in all directions. You can also say margin dash top or margin dash bottom, margin dash left. Save, refresh, and now only the top, the margin from the top changed. Aside from there being width and height attributes you can add to the CSS, there's also stuff like min height and max height to indicate the minimum height and the maximum height you want your element to be. For example, I'll set min height is uh, 350 pixels. I'll save, I'll refresh, and the size of this element increased to 350. If it goes beyond that, it will keep increasing because that's just the minimum height. It's not the absolute height. There's also a max height. The maximum allowed height will be 350. If I refresh, that means it can be anything lower as long as it's under 350 pixels. So if I keep st adding stuff to the element, it will eventually overflow when it surpasses 350 pixels. You can actually set up all the CSS within its own tag. For example, let me add it. It's called the style tag and it goes in the head. I start it, I end it. And now I'm going to delete all this style stuff that's in the div. Okay. I'm going to replace it with a class. Class equals foo. 
and then in the style thing I don't know why but you have to put dot and then the class name in this case I called it foo and then you put the curly brackets and then you put whatever's inside for example I'm gonna make the color red now let's make it blue I'm gonna save it I'm gonna refresh the page and now the color is blue uh, basically I referenced the foo class right here and this is the CSS that should go inside the foo class you can also reference elements by ID for example I'll say ID is foo and instead of a dot or a period I'm gonna put a pound sign I'm gonna save and I'm gonna refresh and now it's referenced by ID let's set it to orange save refresh and it changes just by the ID you can also change elements themselves like say let's say the div all divs will have a border that's green I'll say border is one pixel and it's gonna be dotted this time and it's gonna be green I'm gonna save it add the semicolon and now it has a green border around it yes that's looking wonderfully tacky <laughs> I can even add multiple elements. For example, right here I have div. Uh, let's also make it so that h1, the h1, and the paragraph ta tag also have a green border. All I do is put comma and then whatever tag it is. I save, I refresh, and now the h1 and the paragraph tag also have a green border. Let's say all I want to do is change the color of my links. Let me delete all these style stuff and let's make a hyperlink real quick. I'll just link paragraph. I'll link it to YouTube. A href equals and I'll put uh, http youtube.com and then I'll put the slash a to indicate the end of my link. And there you have it. That's it. I made a hyperlink. Save, refresh, and I have a hyperlink here. Let me change the color of this blue text. And let's say I don't want it underlined. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type a link. A uh, indicates the anchor tag. And this is just the status. Currently just link. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color to uh, orange again. And I'll add the semicolon. And then I'll say font, no, no, it's text decoration is none. Text decoration indicates that I don't want any underlining. I don't want it decorated with anything. So I'll save and I'll refresh. And now it's orange and it's still link and it links to YouTube. But there's no underlining and it's orange. If I click it, it's going to send me to YouTube. If I go back, it's purple. What the heck? That's the next attribute. Uh, there's actually an attribute called a visited. And I can change the color there too. I can say color is brown when it's been visited. I'll save and I'll refresh. And now the color is brown. I didn't add the no text decoration though. I can also stack them like I did before. I can just say comma, a visited, save, and refresh. Now it's also orange, even if it's been visited. There's also one called a hover, a, and then hover. Status is your mouse is currently hovering over the text. Let's make it red. The color is red. Save it. I'll refresh the page. Now whenever I hover over the text, it turns red. The next one is called active, which means you have that website currently open. You can also change the CSS for the entire page, or the HTML body. Let's set the body background to blue. So it sets the entire HTML body's background to blue. You can also make it for all tags, no matter what tags. Let's say every single tag on the page has a border border is one one pixel and this time uh, dotted again and let's make it white I'll save and I'll refresh 
And now every single element on the page has a border of one that's dotted and is white. Okay, let's clear everything and practice real quick. Let's make a simple HTML and CSS layout with the links on the left and the content on the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's make a new div. And the class will be navigation left. Or let's just say nav l and div. You can call it whatever you want. And I'll say links go here. So that's going to be my little links bar. Now let's add style to it. But before I do, let's add a background to the page. Let's say the body's background is gray. I'll save it and I'll refresh. And the background is gray and here I have my div. Let's add some style to the div though. Let's say dot navl or navigation left. And let's add some style. I'll make the border one pixel solid black. I'll make its background white. Background is white. I'll make its width 200 pixels and I'll make its height 400 pixels. I'll save it and let's refresh and that looks like a nice box. That's going to be our main navigation box. And actually I could use a little bit more space bet between the text and the border. So let's add some padding. Padding is 10 pixels. Let's save, refresh, and I added a little bit of padding. Now let's add the content. I'm just going to make a new thing. I'm just going to copy and paste the old div. Except call this one content. Change the class name and I'll say content goes here. So I just copied and pasted this part below and I changed a few things. Now I'm going to change uh, the style. I'm going to copy and paste the, uh, this style for this box. I'm going to make it the style for the content box too. However, we want the content, the main content, to be a lot wider. We need a lot more space for the text. So I'm going to make the width 500. The height is still the same. Everything else is still the same. But let's see what happens when I refresh. What's going to happen is the content is going to go right under the links. I need to position it. So let's add the position tag. Let's add position is absolute from the top, I don't care, let's say 4 pixels, who cares. From the left, or from the left, we're going to move it uh, 250 pixels. So from the left, 250 pixels means 250 pixels to the right. Okay, I'm going to save and I'll refresh. Oops, I forgot the semicolon here. Save, refresh. And now here we have the links and the content. This is the basic HTML structure for a very, 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 very simple layout. Very simple layout in CSS. I kind of have a mal line there, so I can change the top. Five or six, I don't know. It's good to position all elements. Sometimes it's useful to put the CSS on a page of its own. For example, when you have multiple pages and you want to make changes on all the pages, by editing one file. Uh, the way to do this is the link, the link tag in HTML. It, uh, it's used to include JavaScript, not just CSS, to include icons and other types of media. In this case I'm including the style sheet of CSS and the location is foo.css, which I haven't created yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy everything between the style tags I'm going to copy and delete the style tags. I'm going to open Notepad again. Open Notepad. I'm going to paste my CSS in it. I'm going to go to File, Save As. And again, the same thing here. I'm going to select All Files. I'm going to call it foo.css. And I'll save it. And now I have my CSS in a separate page of its own. And I also have it included in my HTML. So I can save, I can refresh, and it still looks exactly the same. Why? Because I have the CSS included from a separate file, even if it's not exactly on the page.
Okay, I'm almost done. Let's mess a little bit with the content. Let's uh, make this a big header. Let's make this the title. Slash H3. This is the title header. I'll save it. And let's make the content goes here a paragraph. This is going to be a chunk of text. Slash P. I'll save and I'll refresh here. This is the title header and the content goes here. Let's center the title. It'll look a lot better if it were centered, right? So we can add style. I'm going to use the attribute text align equals center. Save and refresh. And now it's in the middle. So that's how I aligned it. You can also use the center tag slash center to center stuff. I guess it's no longer really in use, but it also centers stuff. There's all kinds of styles we can add to text. Let's say style equals. I can change the font size by saying font size is 12, 12 pixels. I can change the uh, font itself by saying font family is Arial. You want to make it something compatible that most people have. Arial, Helvetica, Sans Serif, I don't know. There are several font groups, but uh, if you're just making a personal website or something that's going to be on your computer, you can set it up to whatever crazy font you might think of. You can also do like text indent, indent the text by 10 pixels. And I'll copy and paste a bunch of text so you can really see it. Okay, paste, save, refresh. And as you can see, the first part of the text is indented by 10 pixels. So it looks pretty nice. Next, let's say I want to make an image, and I want to make the text wrap around it. So I want to put an image here, and the text will go around it. So let me put my Jimmy R picture here. IMG SRC equals Jimmy R dot PNG. HTML poetry. So I'm going to save it and I'll refresh. And as you can see, the picture is already pretty small, so it's not a big deal. But let's say we have big pictures. So I'll set the width is 120 pixels, and the height is 120 pixels. I'll save, I'll refresh. That's a pretty big picture. Now let's make the text wrap around it. I'm going to set the CSS with the style, no, no, with the float attribute. And I'm going to make it float to the left. I'm going to save and I'm going to refresh. And as you can see, the text is actually wrapping around the image. I can add a little bit of padding too if I want to increase the space. Padding for 5 pixels. Save, refresh. And I gave it a slightly more, uh, a little bit more space. I'm going to make the image a little bit smaller, at least in the height, just so you can see it better, rather than pasting tons of time more text. I'll save and I'll refresh. Whoa, wrong one. Fix 50 pixel height. Jeez, what a mess. Okay, 50 pixels for the height. Save, refresh. Okay, and as you can see, the text wrapped around the image. Very simple. I can actually move the image too. You can put it exactly where you want it. You can put it in the middle of the text if you want, and the text will wrap around it. Very nice. If you want to make any part of your paragraph bold or in italics, please don't use the old tags like bold, italics, or anything like that. Uh, there's a better way. People prefer that you use CSS now. We're going to use the span tag, which does not make a line break. We're going to say span style equals and put the styles you want. Let me end the span here. And for example, let's make it bold. We're going to say font weight is bold. Save. And I'm going to refresh. So this content goes here. It actually made it bold. To make it italics, uh, I'm going to put font style 
is italic. I'm going to save and refresh, and now it's italicized. To make it underlined, we have text decoration. Let's talk a little bit about tables now that we've gone so far. So tables are basically just blocks of data. Tables have rows and they have columns. Um, and it's the same thing for HTML. TR stands for table row. TD stands for table dimension or column. And then we end them. TD slash TD uh, slash TR, I mean. I'm just going to call this foo. I'll save and I'll refresh. And here we have a table that says foo. Let's add a border. Border is one pixel, so you can see it a little bit better. Now let's add another dimension. Dimensions are columns, so when I add another dimension, TD, I'll call it foo2. I save and I refresh, and it added another column. I can do it again, TD, foo3. Save, refresh, another column. Let's add a new row. A row is another item at the bottom, so we'll have two items, one up here and one down here. So let's say um, tr td new row, new dimension, then n td, then n tr. And I'll say this is a new row. Save and refresh. And I made a new row except I don't have two more columns so it kinda left that space where I didn't have those columns I can actually add a TD and say col column span is two so it spans the width of two columns Oops. and say two column eater save it refresh and it uh, basically occupy two spaces, two columns. Uh, you can also use th for table header, which just makes it bold. Not a big deal. Actually, also we have cell padding and cell spacing, which makes your tables not look so ugly. Uh, you can actually add a style tag also and set up your custom border if you don't like this weird stuff. Okay, thanks for listening to that very long tutorial. You won't feel like a master at CSS or HTML after it. It takes quite a bit of practice to really get it down. But you will feel some familiarity. You won't be overwhelmed or you won't be like, ah, that's impossible to learn. Let's look, take a look at Google itself. Um, let's go to the top. We have the HTML tag, the head tag. We have some meta tags. And we have the title tag, the style tag. This is all Google CSS code. We talked a lot about the style tag. And we have uh, a href for links. You know that's a link now. We have spans, we have divs, we have the class, we have the ID we talked about. Even in the CSS, you'll find some stuff you, you know, like top 24, um, position absolute here the height, the font size, the font weight, the float left, we talked about that too. We talked about a ton of these tags already, so you won't feel completely overwhelmed. Text decoration, none for the links. So you can now look at different sites and really study the code. And if you don't know any of the tags, like here's the image tag, if you don't know what the alt attribute does or the title attribute does, you can look it up. It's no big deal. But anyways, I really appreciate you listening to this tutorial. I know it's been very long. You can see a full list of my videos by going to youtube.jimmyr.com. If you like my videos, please subscribe. Anyways, thanks for listening.